my name is Banafshe. I escaped Iran in 1979, a few months after the Islamist takeover led by Khomeini. It was total chaos. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran has been invaded and occupied by Iranian students. The Americans inside have been taken prisoner. The entire country was suddenly thrust from being a Western-friendly and progressive nation to living under the harshest form of Islamic law. My father was one of Iran's leading journalists and intellectuals. In 2001, my father was imprisoned for the fourth time and remained a political prisoner until last year when he committed suicide as a final act of protest against that inhumane regime. I know it may sound radical to you, but I'm here to speak the truth. Iran has a plan to destroy the West, and the number one target is America. Iran has doubled the number of supersonic centrifuges, spinning at over a dozen nuclear facilities. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran could likely go nuclear in under one year. I have this information and assessment. I must alert the world. We need to be totally clear on why a nuclear Iran would be a disaster for the world. There are three reasons. I imagine it would take about one day for Iran to pick up the phone and give the Saudis an ultimatum. And that would just be the beginning. Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Jordan, the UAE, Iraq, and various other countries in the area would all fall like dominoes. With these conquests, Iran would dominate the Strait of Hormuz. Iran is threatening to close the Strait of Hormuz, what the United States government calls by far the world's most important oil choke point. The over-the-top rhetoric makes countries stop and think what would happen to their economies if a vital choke point for Mideast oil became a war zone. The fact is that a mere 10% stoppage in the flow of Gulf oil would make petroleum prices double or triple overnight. American drivers are set to spend a record $481 billion on gasoline. A lot of people are hurting. They take my whole check to pay just to get back and forth to work. Iran could easily trigger a global economic paralysis. Would the United States risk nuclear war to protect these oil interests? I don't think so. And that would leave Iran in possession of the ultimate oil weapon. What I'm saying is that a nuclear Iran is not just a security issue. It's the single most important economic issue facing America and the free world today. Think about everything you know about the volatile Middle East and inject nuclear weapons into the equation. The result is a critically destabilized region. Syria's closest military ally is Iran, and the Assad government is slaughtering men, women, and children on the streets. Iran has a whole string of terrorist proxies. In Lebanon, it's Hezbollah, the party of God. These are the same guys who attacked the U.S. barracks in Lebanon, killing 241 Marines. Gaza, it's Hamas, one of the world's most violent terror organizations, best known for rocket attacks against civilians and heinous suicide bombings, and with no shortage of American blood on their hands. The reason you don't want Iran to have an active nuclear program is you will never know whether the materials are being transported to terrorist groups. Imagine how more emboldened they will be as the patron of a nuclear Iran. And we can't even fathom the horror of an Iranian plot involving al-Qaeda. A nuclear-armed Iran is going to spark an arms race in the Middle East. These weapons will go straight into the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood. Iranian leaders are explicit about wanting to annihilate the entire state of Israel along with the Palestinians that Iran claims to support. Israel is the 
غیر از قطع قده چه علاجی میتوان برای او کرد Iranian missiles do not distinguish between Arab and Israeli, between Muslim, Christian, or Jew. This is not mere rhetoric. The center of Israel, where 80% of the country's population resides in an area the size of suburban Chicago, could be targeted by one nuclear bomb. Israel is America's number one ally and prime strategic asset in the Middle East. Can you possibly imagine a world without Israel? The crisis of a nuclear Iran is not just localized in the Middle East. Iranian leaders are on a messianic warpath with the ultimate goal of hastening the Mahdi, the messianic 12th Imam, to usher in an era of global Islamic domination. Iran's fanatical leaders envision a world living under the most extreme form of Islamic Sharia law. In jeopardy are things that we in the free world take for granted. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press. Public hangings in Iran are especially cruel. Human rights activists say these two teenage boys were executed for being gay. Christian pastor sentenced to death in Iran for refusing to recant his religious beliefs. Even Muslims from non-Shiite sects are targeted for domination. While a nuclear exchange could cost Iran millions of people, Iranian leaders have declared that to be a small sacrifice for advancing jihad, where war is a religious obligation and death brings eternal heavenly rewards. Waves of young boys who volunteered to become martyrs, clearing minefields by running across them. The Times of London reported that Iran has 40,000 suicide bombers trained and ready for action. Iran has terror cells planted throughout the world just waiting to be activated. Senior American government officials say they foiled a major terror plot planned and organized by the Iranian government. All the recent scenes of mobs storming the American embassies is what you will see with a regime that would have an atomic bomb. Let's be very clear. Iran has a plan to take over the world, and they view the United States as the great Satan which must be destroyed. This is a fervently held religious obligation, which is non-negotiable and where mutual nuclear destruction is not a deterrent, but rather an inducement. Once Iran has the bomb, it changes everything. The last time a genocidal madman tried to take over the world, we stopped it. Because if Hitler would have had nuclear weapons, who knows what might have been the outcome. As is, the result was a world war that killed 60 million people. Today's nuclear weapons are a thousand times more powerful than what was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We cannot even fathom the cost in human suffering if we had to go to war to defang a nuclear Iran. Not to mention the trillions of dollars needed to make it happen. We must continue and even intensify the various diplomatic methods that world leaders have worked so hard to implement. But the reality is that Iran's nuclear clock is ticking faster than the diplomatic clock. The Islamic Republic of Iran will not stop its enrichment activities. So we need an effective and reliable backup solution. It's called the red line. Here's how it works. World leaders make a pronouncement outlining a clear and unambiguous set of criteria that will serve as fair warning to Iran that crossing this line will trigger a devastating military response. 
This is very different from a deadline, an arbitrary date of, say, 60 days, whereas the red line is set at a point before Iran can make a final sprint to the nuclear goal line. This red line must be defined by benchmarks like the quantity of uranium, percentage of enrichment, and the possession of component parts such as trigger devices and missile delivery system. This is the smoking gun. There is a news report out of England, a document, which purports to show that Iran has been testing a neutron initiator, which is a trigger for a nuclear weapon, has no civilian use. I know what will speak to the Iranian regime. You have to draw a line in the sand with an ironclad threat, do not cross. For all of us, the red line is a win-win. If Iran comes to its senses and stops, then we will have achieved the remarkable in stopping this horrific threat without firing a shot and without costing a penny. Should Iran be so suicidally insane to cross that red line, then we are still in a far better position for two reasons. First, with Iran having revealed its fanatical true intentions, the red line allows us to proceed with confidence, knowing that the monster has been unmasked. Pragmatically, the red line puts us in the much better position of going up against a non-nuclear Iran than having to face the certainty of war against a genocidal and nuclear Iran. The good Iranian people are out once again on the streets protesting. هیچ کس پشت بان جنگ نیست. همه جویای روش های صلح جویانه برای سرنگونی این رژیم می باشیم. The question of the thin red line is something everybody seems to be dancing over and around. Each of us can choose right now to become a part of the solution. Because although the leaders of the free world are the most powerful individuals, there is another more powerful human force the collective voice of humanity rising up together, calling out in unity. So we're calling on everyone. Sign the global referendum to stand up and declare, I demand that world leaders set and enforce a clear red line to prevent a nuclear Iran. We need everyone on the same page, from soccer moms to CEOs, from the deserts of Sudan to the gardens of Japan. After you've signed the petition, we want to try something that's never been done before. We want to generate an avalanche of separate YouTube videos. We're calling on everyone to record your own 10 second video demanding that world leaders set that red line. Join the global chorus by uploading your video onto YouTube. Now it's crunch time and we need all hands on deck. Post this on Facebook now or send it out on Twitter with hashtag Redline. This is not an issue about the left or the right of Muslim Christians or Jews. That's why I've come to deliver this universal message from the city of Jerusalem, which is the cradle of the three great monotheistic religions. Because ultimately, no matter how you personally interface, with the Iranian issue, whether it's a paralyzed economy or a dangerously destabilized Middle East or even Islamic extremists ruling our planet. The reality is that this affects each and every one of us. This is arguably the most crucial issue in human history to forever be defined as before a nuclear Iran and after a nuclear Iran. The clock is ticking. The centrifuges are spinning. Every one of us needs to stand up and say, it's time to set the red line. Because we cannot live with a nuclear Iran. Thank you.